Now this is the compressor from the big York air conditioner. As I mentioned before, it's an old Copeland reciprocating compressor. Model YRE 6-0500-TFD. Made in USA, obviously. Is it 460 volts, 60 hertz, or 330, 420 volts, 50 hertz. I've got it running on single phase. Seems to run all right. A bit slow though. Not designed for it. just be because I'm running it on single phase. She might be running backwards. Oh, it's all good to fun to play with. Next step, I guess I'll cut it open. There's not much else to do with a junk compressor like this. Well, I've got it all opened up. Ready to run. I didn't open, I didn't uh, contaminate the crankcase by cutting right through. I just cut through the first layer. Pop the top off. It actually had a spring, so it jumped up on me. It's good. It's not a three-cylinder like I thought. It's only two. Just very big cylinders. And it will run on single phase just all right. I mean, obviously it's a lot slower and it draws more juice. But the reason why I wasn't getting any discharge out of it was because of this. She's busted. That's supposed to be spot welded in place so that your discharge comes out and out of the compressor whereas this thing here is just pumping inside its own shell going in one end and out the other that's why this one failed nothing else wrong with it it's just over time vibration has just cracked that out looks like it didn't like that for a while I don't know whether it might have broken when they dumped the machine on, on its side at the depot but it just seems like the kind of thing that would have broken from years of vibration. I'd say that's why this one was turfed. You can see the inside of the crankcase has a lot of sooty stuff. Like it's just pumped high temperature gas all around the inside and made things worse for itself. Now, unfortunately this one's not going to work as a pump anymore but I'll pull it apart and show you a bit more. still refrigerant dissolved into it. The more you stir it up, the more gas comes out. I'm guessing this one wasn't properly uh, recovered either. Oh well. I'm going to pull this thing apart and run it on, on the, in the open. G'day folks. It seems this compressor's had an ongoing vibration problem. We're maybe on startup. It's been wrapping the end of this uh, crankcase heater tube. A lot of score marks on the bottom and tiny little flat flakes of copper floating around. I don't think it, I strongly doubt that it was just from the transport knocks and bumps. It looks like an ongoing abrasion problem where it's, it's just rubbed off on it. It hasn't rubbed through but it's probably pretty darn close. There would have been oil leaking out past the crankcase heater if that was the case but that's dry flex in the bottom there. They're really flat flakes so it's not just from a single impact from being dropped it's the uh, it's an ongoing problem. There's a nice little mark down here which corresponds to the location of that little uh, heater point. That's a 
fine copper dust. I think that's the problem. The initial startup must force the compressor to kick and thrash around a bit and it's broken the uh, discharge tube eventually. Either that or that was going to perforate one day and let the gas out and all the oil make a horrible mess. Anywho, get this thing cleaned up. Well, I think I've found what I need to complete my autopsy on this compressor. This here would be the first point of failure, mounting spring. It's reliant on these two springs, the one on the bottom and the one here, to remain central and stable in the housing. Now what's happened is this one here is shattered, and there's a little rub mark here, which probably coincides with it sitting down at an angle. This thing has dropped sideways and cockeyed in the housing hard enough to rub through, almost rub through on that crankcase heater tube and hard enough to bust the end of this uh, discharge tube box inside. That's supposed to be soldered into the muffler like so, but there's a vibration and excess tension on it because it was putting a lot of tension on this tube while it was uh, sitting cockeyed in the housing, just busted it off. So I suppose either that's got to go or that would eventually leak, spew oil and gas out everywhere. Uh, yeah. I don't even know if Copeland make reciprocating compressors anymore. It wouldn't surprise me if they don't. Especially with the success of their scroll compressors, which really are a nice little unit. Um, yeah, that's what killed this one busted spring and then just vibration damage from there on out everything else is fine, the bearings are fine she turns over nicely they all seem alright it does pump pretty well when you seal up the discharge but there you have it, I think I'll pull the rest of this thing apart well folks this is the Copeland reciprocating compressor. Strip down as far as I can. Got our motor in cover. Couple of suction line tubes that go into the head. Thermal switch. Two pistons. It's our motor stator. 415 volt three phase. With our crankshaft and motor rotor pressed on in bearing with the crank case a little failed spring mount lots of little nibble and wear marks in there where it's been rubbing away for quite some time real suction end strainer this is our head this is your low pressure suction side and this is your high pressure discharge there's a passageway that goes underneath under that rectangular section so you've got cylinder 1 and 2 out to your discharge muffler which is just a hollow cavity obviously a broken discharge tube there's nothing, nothing inside the muffler although there's a pressure overload there if high pressure gets too high this is your valve plate this is the in, inside of the cylinders these two are your inlet valves. Gas is drawn in past them. They flip open when the piston goes down. Suck gas in through these inner passages. These are your discharge points under that little reed. And that's where the gas goes out into these chambers here under high pressure. And that just fits up like so. Head bolt. basically it, there's not a lot to them and unfortunately this one failed just because of a uh, metallurgical problem I believe that's what it would be brittle or improperly made spring there's nothing else wrong with it, the piston bearings are good this alloy seems to have a lot of copper in it it's worn down to copper but there's no actual shell so I'd say it's a special alloy Contains a lot of copper. Good. Pits and rings are all good. The bores are still nice and good. You can see the honing. Oh yeah, just failed because of that one mount. 
Oh well. Everything I've worked out tells me this is actually the original compressor from the uh, air conditioner as well. They've never had to change it. This is the top housing and still got its factory filling point on it. This system was sealed up at the factory with the refrigerant charge in it. So it's done well to last this long. I don't know exactly how old it is, but it's old. Like early 1980s. Maybe someone can fill me in on it. How old would that old York system be? Let alone these old Copeland reciprocating compressors. Well, thanks for watching.